Introducing the Epic New Swift. Time to go Swifting. On Maruti Suzuki Arena presents the SPN Triple Four Time Out, where we have the company of Parvez Maharuf and Tamim Iqbal. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time. Tamim, I'll come to you first. Uh, that was quite nervy in the finish. Bangladesh made it a bit of a thriller in the chase, uh, but two huge points for them to kickstart their campaign, especially considering the tough build-up they've had. Yeah, definitely. You know, very happy for the boys, especially for the players. You know, uh, after the series loss against uh, US, there's a lot of criticism. There's a lot of things were happening. So I'm sure this win will uh, make them a calm and uh, the, uh, and will and they start to think about the next game, about their own performances. I think the game was uh, pretty good. If you see the first half, uh, I think the ballers were extremely good. Uh, uh, they Sri Lanka came very strongly in the first six, and then uh, after in the middle, it's all about Bangladesh. You know, there was a time uh, seven overs, there was not a boundary was given by Bangladeshi bowlers. So, uh, you know, it, pressure was always building up on uh, on Sri Lankan batters. And I think uh, Bangladesh bowlers did a very, very decent job. Yeah, Farvez, lots of pieces to unpack from how this unraveled for Sri Lanka. But before we get to that, already seeming like a bridge too far, getting out of this group for Sri Lanka? Yeah, I mean, I would like to say no. But I think uh, two games, two losses... Um, you know, almost uh, the chances are very bleak, I should say. And, uh, you know, very, very happy with Bangladesh's performances that they were up for it. As Tamim said, the build up to the World Cup wasn't the greatest, wasn't the most rosiest, but they stood up when it matters the most. That's what good international teams do. And uh, the experienced players, uh, you know, put their hands up. So this is a, a mark, hallmark of a good uh, team, which uh, was very well led by Najmul Hassan Shanto. As much as the chase became thrilling at the end, it is the first innings that decided the course of this contest. Uh, Farvez, Patum Nisanka uh, played a bit of a blinder, but absolutely no contribution from the rest of the Sri Lankan batters. Yeah, yeah, Shamin. When you, when you have had the half a mark, 74 for 3 in 10 overs, and then you know, expect at least 9 runs per over with so many hitters to come. Uh, you know, a couple of the batsmen were getting in. The pitch was really good. And uh, you could only master, what, six to 50 runs in the next uh, 10 overs, just not good enough at this level. Uh, it's very easy to pinpoint fingers. He should have done this, he should have done that. But, you know, this issue of batting has been and been there for a long time. Yes, there have been instances where, uh, you know, Sri Lanka's batting has clicked. And, uh, you know, those games, they've been, uh, you know, they've been very, very dangerous. But, I mean, it matters the most in a World Cup. You know, the conditions were so good. You expect Sri Lanka to get at least 160, which, which I thought was a winning score in that pitch with some extra bounce uh, on offer and some keeping low. But in the end, I think a lot of credit should go to Bangladesh. As Tamim said, there was a period, uh, no boundary score for 42 deliveries. Goes to show the control what uh, the uh, bowling attack of Bangladesh had. So most of his Taskeen led from the front. Even Tanzit, the young man, bowled really well. And Rashad Osei, what a, what a fine he has been. You know, he, he was spinning the ball square as well as he's getting the, he was getting the bounce. And on a word on, a word on uh, Shanto's captaincy to have a slip field on the 14th over uh, in a T20 game to get rid of Manindu Hasaranga shows uh, how well, uh, how, a good, how a good day what Bangladesh had today. Yeah, that 15th over of Sri Lanka's innings looks like the turning point when you look back at this game. 100 for 3 and 14. And that's when of the first ball of the 15th, Charita Solanka falls to Rishad Hussain. Sri Lanka eventually managed only 24, losing six wickets in the last six overs. Tamim, uh, let's start with Rishad Hussain. Uh, so new to the game, 21 years old, just broke the back of the Sri Lankan innings with those wickets of Asalanka and Hasaranga and then following up with the wicket of Dhananjay De Silva. Yeah, definitely. He had a fantastic game, I think. But uh, if you if you see that 15th over of Rishad Hussain, which, was, which I believe was the third over that he bowled, but before that third over that he bowled, there was three, four overs bowled by Shakib, uh, Mustafez and Taskin, where they didn't give away anything. So when Rishad Hussain came to bowl on that 15th over, Sri Lanka had to go after him. They had no other option. So this is where uh, I think he bowled extremely cleverly, got the two wickets and uh, changed the whole course of the game. You know, so And also, uh, a lot of credit must go to uh, the selectors who picked him, not the current selectors. I'm talking about the previous selectors. 
Because to be very honest, if you see uh, uh, the domestic performances of Rishad Hussain was never up there. Uh, they took that uh, gamble. They took that chance. They kept on playing him uh, in the last 10, 15 uh, T20s and eventually he's paying off, you know. So a lot of credit goes to those selectors that uh, not uh, many people speak about. Yeah, and it's also quite rare when we look from the outside. In general, over all over all these years, you've not seen too many leg spinners coming out of Bangladesh. So a rare enough pick in that sense. And also given the nod within the squad, ahead of someone like uh, Mahedi Hassan in the playing 11, uh, you'd expect a lot more from uh, Rishad Hussain over the course of this tournament and in the years I to come. I expect a lot more, but uh, if you if you see, especially subcontinents are very result oriented nations. So uh, if you if you win, everything is good. But if when you're not winning and when when he's not performing, uh, to have that back, uh, to have that support towards him will be very important because uh, leg spinners uh, are someone that you need to build. It's not like that they'll come and then they'll just start firing from game one. You know. So if you see. Uh, Chahal, if you see Kuldeep, India build them and this is now they're the match winners for them. So that's how we have to be a bit patient with him. He might have a bad game. He might have a fantastic game next game. You never know. But if if he's having a bad game, you need to be really patient with him. If you look at the top teams in the world, you take Australia, you take uh, even Afghanistan, for for example, they got a Rashid Khan. Australia have Adam Zampa and uh, Yuzi Chahal for India. These are match winners and the wrist winner in T20 cricket nowadays are gold dust. So I reckon, you know, a lot of credit should go to Bangladesh selectors or previous or the present ones, whoever, that to sticking in, sticking with him. And also something that we didn't see from Rishado Sen is this batting progress. I remember the last time Sri Lanka Bangladesh played a series in Bangladesh. I think he scored a few sixes against uh, Manidu Hasarang and Vice Diction. Shows that he has the batting depth as well and he is someone that I'm sure Bangladesh uh, will see a lot in the future. Parvez, I'd like to get a word from you on uh, the Bangladesh Pacers as well. Mustafizur Rahman, Rahman, Tashki and Ahmad, all that experience, both of them uh, were so good on the day and incisive wickets. Uh, Fizz got Nisanka, Tashkin removed Kusal Mendes early in the piece. They were key too uh, to this bowling performance. I thought the, both the experienced bowlers used their variations to their, to their liking much better. Because if you look, look at how the Patung Nisanka got out, it was a slower delivery by uh, Mustafiz. And previously, he tried to bowl a bouncer, played a pull shot, went for a boundary, and straight away went for a slow ball. I mean, they were they were taking the right percentages, right? That's where I thought uh, Mustafiz and Tuskin used their experience. And Prof, that it should go to Bangladesh overall. We can you know harp a lot about Sri Lanka's batting display. But I think a lot of credit should go to Bangladeshi bowlers the way they bowl and even, you know, special word on Shanto's captaincy. You now we spoke about uh, Charita Salanka, the 15th over first ball. He had to go for it because previously nothing was happening since the uh, break was happened. And, you know, how how what the chances what Charita Salanka took was to go against the wind as well as the longer part of the ground. And that was playing into the Bangladesh hands and straight away the next delivery, one of the Salanka was out. So these are the little moments wins you games and I thought Bangladesh had that bit of luck going on today. And they deserved all the lucks, but they had today. Coming to the chase now, Tamim, a knock that really stands out from Tawhid Ridhoi. Comes in at 28 for 3. Could have been shaky. But then smashes 40 of 20, including those three consecutive sixes, which with 52 needed a 54, was just that final spell which tilted uh, the contest decisively in Bangladesh's favour. Yes, as I said, that I I didn't enjoy the way Bangladesh uh, chased uh, the whole thing. It's not about the wickets that uh, I'm talking about. I think 125, 135, it's a very tricky score in T20. So I think the best possible way to chase this total is if someone from the top three goes and gets the quick runs. If you get the quick runs in the first six, and then it becomes very easy. You will never feel un the middle order batsman will never be under under pressure of the run rate. So that's why I think we had an opportunity. Yes, we got one or two early wickets, but uh, Lytton uh, had an opportunity to play a little more aggressively. I think uh, he he took it very safely, which uh, which I uh, didn't enjoy. I'm not talking about one particular batsman. I'm talking about the whole unit. But uh, a lot of credit has to be given to Tohid Rida. The way he came back, if you see his uh, 40 runs of 20 balls now, 
it seems that uh, he was the man that changed the whole thing because uh, at the end it became extremely tight. Did become tight that Sri Lanka found themselves in the contest uh, going towards the end was almost single handedly down to Nuvan Tushara uh, Farvez. Uh, he'd enjoyed bowling against Bangladesh in the recent series and quite phenomenal even on this day, even if it comes in a defeat. Yeah, in the previous game, he picked up five wickets with a hat trick last time Sri Lanka played Bangladesh. And, uh, you know, he, he bowled really well with the new ball, he was swinging it. And with the older ball, you know, he was uh, using the slow ball for good effect. And, uh, yeah, it's just unlucky that even, even the hat trick ball, it just it was swung a little. Went down the left side where Sri Lanka was, you know, anticipating another wicket. They were feeling it. But uh, it was too little too far for, you know, Sri Lankan uh, bowlers. I mean, when, you, when the batting team doesn't put up a decent score, you know, always you can't rely on the bowlers to do, do the job for you. But, you know, overall, I'm very happy with the bowling effort. Even with Matish Patin, yes, he might not have the best of day, but he gave his all. But in the Vasarang, you know, he was trying to take because that's why I think uh, Tawit Ridoy uh, picked up the two googlies, went over mid wicket with two slot sweep and he knew the next one is going to be a leg spinner gave himself room and went over uh, went over extra cover so that was smart betting by Thawit Vidoy that young man is, I think he's only about 23 24 he's showing a lot of lot of courage a lot of uh, experience for his age and uh, return does for me yeah he could have uh, up the ante a little bit but I just thought he played it safe and he wanted to keep his wicket intact just that you know try and drag the game as much as possible so that Mahmoudullah and Shaki Bulasan can come and finish the game for Bangladesh. All right, that has us covered for what was a game that could be of great significance for Group B happening at the Grand Prairie Stadium in Dallas. But before we leave, I must congratulate all involved because we have now seen a Bangladesh Sri Lanka game where all the talking points involved bat, ball, and all the things that we associate with cricket, a non venomous contest, might I say. Thank you so much. Parvez Maharuf and Sami Mikpal for covering Bangladesh versus Sri Lanka for us. Bangladesh kickstart their campaign with a win. Sri Lanka left on the cusp. Introducing the epic new Swift. Time to go Swifting.